Hey guys, this is Jean-Claude. I'm back today. I did not think I'd be able to get another video out for like a week or so. But you know what? You guys spoke. You can maybe thank Trips Ahoy for this. He said he missed my daily uploads. You know what? I miss doing those as well. It's been just a little bit hard lately. Uh, we all have our ruts in different ways, shapes, or form. It has nothing to do with YouTube itself. It's just I've been extremely busy. Alright, we got ourselves a yellow archon. Oh no, I went a little far. Look at this, we have this. I'm very excited about this, but I can already tell this is Brobnar. This is heartbreaking. Oh gosh. And the last house is Shadows. The Doomsayer that betrays the fist. As always, these yellow archons are really hard to see. We'll bring it a little bit closer. It's actually like a huge face, kind of cool. Got wings. All right, let's see what we have inside this thing. All right. We are starting off with Shadows, it's so in the fence. Three power, fight, reap. Move one amber from one of your cards to your pool. Cards got really good with Saurions. Hopefully we have something like a skeleton key or capture in here so we can use this ability. Lethal distraction, amber and every play it. Choose a creature for the remainder of the turn. Whenever this creature takes damage, it takes an additional two damage. Subtle mole, it's an artifact. Action, your opponent discards a random card from their hand. Subtle chain, amber and every play. Your opponent discards a random card from their hand. Spike Trap. It's an artifact. Amber whenever you play it. Omni. Sacrifice it. If you do, deal three damage to each flank creature. Chain Gang. Three power. After you play Subtle Chain, ready. Chain Gang. Action. Steal an Amber. Shuffle a Subtle Chain from your discard pile into your deck. Umbra. Two power. Skirmish. Fight. Steal an Amber. Trust no one. Steal an Amber. If there are no friendly creatures in play, instead steal one Amber for each house represented among enemy creatures to a maximum of three. Mug, Amber whenever you play it, move one Amber from a creature to your pool. Deal two damage to that creature. A second one of those. J, Vendas, two power elusive, reap, deal one damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, you get to steal one. Love seeing steal. Hit and run, deal two damage to a creature, return a friendly creature to your hand. Haven't really seen any play effects yet, but hopefully we'll have some in our other houses. And now we're on to Dis. It's Greater Octet, four power taunt. At the end of your ready card step, Purge a card from your hand. If you do, give Greater Octet two plus one power counters. I'm a big fan of this card. Essentially, you're going to play it, leave a card in your hand at the end of the turn. It's going to go up to a six power taunt. That's really good. It can keep getting bigger every single turn. It's also helping you cycle your deck and get certain cards out of your deck. That's pretty powerful. Eater of the Dead, four power, fight, reap. Purge a creature from a discard pile. If you do, put a plus one power counter on Eater of the Dead. Good card. Soul Keeper, it's an upgrade. Amber in every play. This creature gains destroyed. Destroy the most powerful enemy creature. Obsidian Forge, it's an artifact. Amber in every play. Action. Sacrifice any number of friendly creatures. Then you may forge a key at plus six current cost, reduced by one for each creature sacrificed this way. If you do, destroy Obsidian Forge. Key cheats are very nice. Gleeful Mayhem, Amber in every play. For each house, deal five damage to a creature of that house. This is a really good card, especially if you share houses with your opponents, because it allows you to keep some of your creatures around while you target theirs. Not finished with you, Amber and you play it. Shuffle any number of creatures from your discard pile into your deck. Lithol's five power, fight, reap, capture an Amber. A second Lithol. A third Lithol. I really do love whenever you see three or more of a card in a deck. It really helps make it that much more consistent. And Lithol here is a pretty good creature. I mean, five power, the ability to slow your opponent down as far as getting keys is really good. Imp Spectre, two power destroyed. Purge a random card from your opponent's hand. Festering Touch, Amber and you play it. Choose up to two creatures. Deal one damage to each chosen creature. If that creature is already damaged, deal three instead. Edorome is four power reap. Destroy a creature of the house with the most creatures in play. And now on to Brobnar and it's a brew. These seem to be pretty common, but cool nonetheless. It's Mog Hunter's brew. Amber and you play it. Give a creature two plus one power counters. Mega Mog Hunter, 8, power, fight, deal 2 damage to a flank creature. We needed more creatures like this Brobnar creature in this set. You needed big, beefy creatures with fight effects to really take care of what the Saurians were doing. It's a shame they made the Saurians as large as they were, while still sometimes giving them better fights than the Brobnar creatures have. Guji Dinosaur Hunter, 4, power, elusive, action, deal 2 damage to a creature. Deal 6 damage instead if it is a dinosaur creature or has amber on it. It's a pretty good way to take out most of the dinosaurs. It's a fun little card. Gravel Guts, 5 power. After an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Gravel Guts, give it 2 plus 1 power counters. Warrior's Refrain, Amber every play it. Stun each creature with power 3 or lower. A second Warrior's Refrain. 
Shorty, four power, assault four. Reap and rage shorty, so it makes it have to attack the next time you use it. Narp, eight power, one armor, Narp's neighbors cannot reap. Now this is sort of a bad example of what you want to do with the Bravnar creature. It is eight power, it does have a lot of survivability, thanks to the armor as well, but this negative is not really worth it. How many Saurians are going to get to 8 plus power thanks to just some of the tricks they have and don't necessarily have a negative, they usually have a positive on them. Gron 9 toes 5 power, gets plus 4 power while it's damaged. Ganger Chieftain, 5 power play, you may ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Real quick, I must say there's quite a bit of Brabnar creatures in here, so that's actually very nice. And a second Ganger Chieftain. And the last card is a cow find. Five power before the fight. Deal two damage to each neighbor of the creature cow find finds. Is it possible he had nine Bravnar creatures in here? It's probably only eight, but I can only think of the two warriors refrains and the brew off the top of my head. All right, let's get our amber up first. Okay, oh, it was nine Bravnar creatures. That's quite a bit better. Still, I would have liked to see some better effects on them. To be fair, though, we did get Ganger Chieftains, which is essentially an action attached to a creature. That's pretty good. Let's see here. So the Ganger Chieftains do help it out quite a bit. Alright, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen is pretty strong considering how many creatures I think we have in here. You can almost say there's 15, because the mugs here have a decent chance of getting us an additional one. Really against almost any set. The old sets you had some Capture, Charette, you had some decent amount of Age of Ascension. Obviously the Saurians are very much known for having Amber on their creatures. Let's check out our Amber Control. I wish we would have had a little bit more inside of Dis. I know we had the three Lithals, but I would like more immediate effects. We have to play the Lithals first, then be able to capture. Our opponent sees that, which kind of changes the value of that, if that makes sense to you. Um, but it's still good to have that air control. It's just not the same as an instant reward. All right, let's see. So yeah, just the three inside of this. A couple more inside of shadows. <laughs> The cell in the fence, I don't think there was any way to get any amber onto our creatures, so, oh boy. Sometimes that happens in Gee Forge. It's still, I guess, just a three power creature. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, is that all? Did I miss anything? I was talking, okay, yeah, I guess it's just seven. The not finished with you can help bring back the Lithals and some of these, but this is definitely where the deck is lacking. Let's go ahead and show the deck strength, though. Let's get the creatures up. Uh, the creatures are part of its strength. I think that this deck is going to be really great as far as like board control is concerned. It seems like most of the creatures involve controlling the board. So let's get the creatures up and then once we uh, combine those with the actions that we saw, you'll really see how this thing kind of plays together. Almost every single card is controlling either their hand or their board in some way. So creatures count 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15. 20? Okay, 20 creatures, not bad, but really, check this out, let's just jump right into it. This is going to help do some additional damage, spike trap. Actually, these two cards in conjunction with one another is pretty nice. A lot of times your opponent's going to try and protect their smaller creatures by putting the bigger creatures on the side because they see that spike trap sitting there. Obviously, once you play it, you don't get to use it right away. So Lethal Distraction will help you take out those 4 and 5 power creatures. Not too bad. Uh, let's see, let's go back here. All right, so as I was saying, a lot of our cards do damage, mugs. And if they're not doing damage, then you have things like Soul Keep, which outright can destroy creatures. Obsidian Forge is a key cheat. One of the few cards that doesn't actually help us control the board, Gleeful Mayhem. Not finished with you, it's at least helping us repopulate our board. Festering Touch, Mog Hunter's Brew makes our board bigger so we can survive more fights. Warriors Refrain, also controlling the board by taking care of the smaller creatures. We will have to worry a little bit about our shadows though if we're playing that. Hit and run once again, just a nice solid two damage. And set them all taking cards out of their hand. This deck strength is going to be trying to control the board. It does have bigger overall creatures it felt like inside of Dis and Brobnar. I'm actually surprised here. This Brobnar, let's pull all these creatures up. This is way better than I'm used to inside of Worlds Collide. I'm not saying that this is insane, but I'm so used to seeing like one and two power creatures inside of Brobnar, and that's really disappointing. Even three power creatures, because like War Grumpus, they're just not that great. Because Brobnar wants to do one of two things with their creatures. 
Control the board or reap with them. Well, guess what? Bravnar doesn't have great reap effects, so you're going to have to rely on them more to actually control the board. But look at this. I think there was only one creature that was below a 5 power, and it's a shorty. Shorty's so good in its own right because of this Assault 4. It helps you get past elusive creatures. It can finish off creatures. They've already had some damage on them. Just a great card. Really, the 4 power here doesn't matter too much because it's usually just taking the creatures out and not taking any damage in return. So that's really powerful. So you got the Calfine is able to help control your opponent's board. We'll have a nice survivability. Getting your Chieftain allows you some of the fight effects immediately. Grand Nine Tails gets pretty big up to 9. Narp is 8 power. Gravel Guts can typically get to 7 power. The Dinosaur Hunter here is our lowest power of 4, but it at least has Elusive to help it survive a little bit longer. And this action is pretty interesting. I mean, if our Saurian opponents aren't careful, this could help us get some Amber pretty fast. The Mega Mog Hunter being 8 is very nice, as well as maybe taking out a weekend or just a low power flank creature. It's pretty nice. So really, this Brobnar might be one of the best I've seen. It's lacking on the actions, the big important ones like Berserker Slams, which are board control, give you Amber, and make sure your opponent loses an Amber. I mean, we don't have that sort of card, but honestly, I can't complain too much about this Brobnar. Is this deck that great? I'll tell you what, it's not bad. I think it does have some pretty cool things going for it. I think each house is pretty good in its own right. Um, I don't think there's too many synergies overall. I do think in a deck like this, though, where you are trying to control your opponent's board with your own board, Obsidian Forge is pretty nice because hopefully you're the one that has the bigger board. You'll maybe be able to get a free key out of this. And we did have a decent amount of disc creatures, which I like to see with the Forge. Because that'll sometimes allow you to be right on the fringe of forging the key with that plus six. But these guys are essentially almost amber pips if you just play them from your hand at the same time. Yeah, right here. What was it, like seven? Yeah, seven creatures. That's pretty nice. It really helps that forge go off more often. This deck is going to have to just hope its creature survives. Reap, get the amber. Its steel overall is not that powerful. We didn't have a real big card. Take care of rush decks or really take our opponents off keys if they go up high. No infernuses or anything like that, which do two or more. I think overall it's a pretty solid performer. It's great for your locals. This style deck is not going to be good on the Vault Tour. Vault Tour decks typically fall into three different categories. It's either a real, a real Amber Rush, it's really controlling, and that includes both the board and your opponent's Amber, or it's some sort of gimmick deck, like some sort of combo, uh, something like a Heart of the Forest, possibly Martian Generosity with the Key Abduction sort of thing, those style decks, and those are really the three big decks you're going to see. This deck will be a lot of fun to play, it's just not at the highest level. So we're going to give a deck like this a C-. Alright guys, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.